Recently, I sent out a direct mail campaign here in my local market. About three days later, which was yesterday, I started receiving phone calls. As of this morning, I listened to some of the messages. A lot of them weren't interested, and that's the nature of the beast when it comes to direct mail. But there's one person that shows some interest on a message. Now, I have no idea if this guy is a deal or not. I have no idea what the situation is. But what I decided to do is show you guys the steps that I personally take when I'm vetting these leads. Now, hopefully, I can get them on the phone and we can create a, a deal. If that's the case, then what I'm going to do is get the information that I need over the phone. And then I'm going to set up an appointment to go out and look at the property. And hopefully, I can document the entire process so that you can see what it takes to get deals from start to finish. So just remember, I sent out a direct mail campaign. Direct mail is not for everybody, especially newbies. If you can't afford to do it, you have to find other ways to be able to find deals. And I'm testing out a brand new yellow letter that I've never used before. And so far, the results are mediocre, you know, to be honest with you. The calls that are coming in are from people who are frustrated, which, again, that's the nature of the beast when it comes to direct mail. But I'm not looking for the 99% of the people that's not interested. I'm more interested in the one percent or the one or two people that may be interested where i can have a decent conversation with them in order to be able to see if we can create a deal so this particular list i pulled from investor deal pro which i'll link in the description box for you guys to be able to check out and it was a vacant property list with uh free and clear as well as pre foreclosures tied to it as well the first thing i'm going to do is pull the addresses that the seller provided for me on the message. Now, when people call me through my direct mail campaigns, I typically have a 24 hour recorded message that they listen to and then they leave a message. I use CallRail as my phone system as of right now. That may change in the near future because I'm adding some features to my Investor Deal Pro software. But as of right now, I use CallRail. And when they call in through CallRail, I receive a call on my cell phone, but in addition to that, I receive messages as well. And I'm able to listen to the messages directly on the phone. This particular seller left his name, his wife's name, his phone number, and two property addresses that he said we can discuss. So what I'm gonna do right now is pull up the two property addresses just to do some research on these two particular addresses and then I'm going to call the seller and we'll see where the conversation goes from there. So I'm just going to go to InvestorDealPro.com. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up these two addresses that this particular seller left on the voicemail. So the first one is at 1020 Watkins Street here in Greensboro. And you can see just based on the sellability scores, wholesale wise, we are really, really high. And this is typical because I was actually targeting this particular segment when I pulled the list. Rental score and retail score is about the same, not too far from each other. So you have a 499 for a retail score, uh, unlikely to sell at market price in the next 90 days. And then a rental score, likely to sell to a landlord in the next 90 days. And it's probably going to be me but very likely to sell at a discount in the next 90 days. So that's exactly what I'm looking for. So let's pull the comparable sales on this one to see what we can potentially get for this property before we call the seller. The reason why I'm doing this is so that I can be prepared when I call up the seller and I'm trying to gather information about uh, the property and you know his reasons why and things like that. And when I start getting into pricing, I need to know if this seller is even in the ballpark of where I need to be to see if it's realistic because I can create a deal right over the phone, worst case scenario. Yeah, so this one sold back in February. This one sold back in May. These are the closest dates that we have and it, there's only two comps. And if I'm looking at the prices, one sold for 113,000 and one sold for 93,000. And looking at, the square footage, this one wouldn't count because it's larger. 
Um, it's not within 200 square feet of the property. So it's a little over 200 square feet. This one will count. Then I'm back at 1010 Cranbrook Street, which is one comp, literally. And that one sold for 113000 which is not a bad situation. This one is actually smaller than the house that I'm interested in. Now, one comp is not enough, but that's really all I have to play with based on the information right here. So that's what I'm going to use. And I am going to copy this Cranbrook Street address. And I'm just going to go to Google and I just want to see what the house looks like. Now, I'm just pulling up Google Maps and just looking at this house. It's a pretty decent looking house. Now, let me see if I can find some other pictures on this house as well by going to maybe a site like Zillow, which is perfect right here. This house doesn't have a lot of pictures, but I did see it on Realtor.com as well. You can see on Zillow, it sold for $112,500. Uh, but let's look on Realtor.com and see if there's any other pictures. So there's nine pictures here. Let's see what it looks like. All right, this is all exterior pictures so, so far. Interior looks pretty decent. Yeah, so it's a nice, decent looking property, right? So now let's look at the Watkins Street and see how it compares to this 1010 Cranbrook Street. So let me just go to Google again. Let me paste in the Watkins Street address. Go to Google Maps. And you can see it's actually a similar house, very similar house. So this tells me, honestly, I can probably get, let me see if there's any interior pictures of this property. 1020 Watkins, there's no interior pictures, but it looks very, very similar to the Cranbrook Street property. You can see it right here. So I can actually use this property as a comp. You can see the similarity. Look at this property and then look at the Watkins Street property. Almost the same property, to be honest, right? If I blow this picture up right here. So look at this one and then look at this one. Almost the same house. So this is a really solid comp. It just sold not so long ago, a couple months ago, really. And I'm going to use this as my starting point. You know, honestly, the property that I'm looking at is a bit larger. So I'm using this as a comp. It sold for $113,000, $112,500, give and take $500 based on the information that we saw on this property. And now I know I have a starting point of at least that when I hop on the phone with the seller. So I'm just going to write down $113,000 on this property here, which I think is very reasonable. It's literally right around the corner from the house. And... You, know, you can see it right here. It's on the next street, actually. It's a solid comp. So now I'm going to look up the second property, 3805 Hewitt Street. And that's in Greensboro. It's within the same zip code. I'm guessing this might be relatively close to the other one. But you can see, again, the wholesale score, which is typical because that's what I went after. The retail price point down here is saying just shy of 100 grand. It can rent for $1,470 to $1,800. And then the wholesale price should be right around $65,000. I'm going to verify that through the comps. All right. So you, this has to be right within the same neighborhood because you can see the Cranbrook Street property popping up again. Um, multiple Cranbrook Streets, Hewitt Streets. The first thing I'm going to do, just like with the other ones, let's just go to the sold dates to prevent pulling old comps. I don't see anything that recently sold that's comparable to this property but what i am going to do is pull this 2022 a little over six months ago at this point for seventy thousand dollars all right now, i personally like comps within a three month time frame but if we had to use this we're talking a little over six months ago i might have to use this as a comp all right so let's copy this melvin place address let's go to google and i just want to look to see what this melvin place looks like from the front all right, so here's another property. First off, let's look around. Let's see what's in the neighborhood. It's kind of a mix of, I know, I know exactly where this property is located. The only thing I don't like is this across the street, but it's not terrible. These are actually stores, right? So this is the property. 
uh, that sold for, let me just look. This is Melvin Place. This property sold for $70,000 back in December. Let's see how comparable this property is to the Hewitt Street. So again, this Hewitt Street looks very similar to the other property, and it doesn't look that far off of this Melvin Place. So it looks very, very similar. You can see it. So I'm going to assume this property is worth at least $70,000 as well. And what I will do is I'm going to look for interior photos of this Melvin place because that can be a telltale sign of if this place was renovated or not. So, so far we have two properties. One of them is a $70,000 property potentially. And the other is a $113,000 property potentially. So let me just go ahead and look at Zillow to see if I find any photos of this Melvin place. I don't see anything yet. Realtor.com. Let me see if they have any photos. No, I don't see anything. Um, a lot of times Realtor.com will have additional comparable sales recently sold nearby. You got 162000 on Watkins. These are all up there in price, right? So a 2-1 is $115,000, for example, 1010 Cranbrook. That's the one that we looked at. So chances are we can probably get more money for that Melvin place as well. But, you know, we just got to do a little more research after speaking with the seller. I'm going to say that this property, because I know that we have proof of at least one comparable sale that looks like it needs some work that sold for $70,000. I'm going to say that this this other property on 3805 Hewitt is probably worth right in a range of 110 to 113 as well because it's not too far at all from the first property. Uh, and also, in addition to that, it's a similar property to the other ones as well. So Watkins Street and Hewitt Street are the two properties from this particular seller that we're about to call. I'm going to ask him some questions to see what we can drum up. Hopefully, he's realistic on his price. Maybe we can do some type of seller finance deal or, you know, if he's really cheap, a wholesale deal. I prefer seller finance if possible. Now, before I give him a call, I wanted to make sure that I pulled up my property information sheet. So whenever you're talking with a seller over the phone, just remember the best salespeople in the world have scripts. So you want to make sure that you at least have right in front of you the information that you need to get from the seller. Now, whether you use these exact questions verbatim is entirely up to you. I would personally put it in my own words and you'll see that I'm just going to have a conversation with the seller based on these particular questions. And I'm even going to switch up how I ask these particular questions. So I'm just going to give him a call right now and let's see where this conversation goes. Hey, this is uh, Jamel Gibbs. I'm giving you a call back in regards to the properties on Watkins and Hewitt Street in Greensboro. But I, I can't, I shouldn't even answer the phone. Could you call me back about 30 minutes? 30 minutes? I'm sorry. No problem. Yeah, give me 30 minutes. Okay, I'll give you a call back then. Hey, buddy, I was just looking your number up to call you back. Gotcha, gotcha. Wanted to make sure I give you a call back. So I'm very familiar with, with the area where the properties are located. Uh, would you mind telling me a little bit about them? First, sir, I've talked to so many people. You need to refresh my memory. Who are you? <laughs> I'm sorry. My name is Jamel Gibbs. I'm, I'm Jamel Gibbs. My wife is Ariel Gibbs. We sent you a letter. Yeah, I called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I called and left. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Are you... Do you have your own rental property or are you flipping it or what's the deal? Yeah, so I buy rental properties in Greensboro and I'm looking to purchase some more and uh, that's why I reached out. Are you, are you located in Greensboro? I am. Oh, okay. And uh, the reason I asked, sir, uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I haven't got anything that's for sale, but uh, I know you guys are... Y'all got the non-occupied list of blah, blah, blah. I know that's where you get your leads at. 
I've got nothing for sale, okay. but I will entertain offers. You know okay. what I'm saying? And that being said, uh, I've been doing this, sir, for 45, 48 years. So I really don't sell real cheap, but mm-hmm. I'll be glad to talk if you want to. I mean, I know what they're worth, just telling you the truth. I'm, mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I'll keep them before I sell them real cheap. You know what I mean? Understood. Understood. Well, uh, would you mind telling me a little bit about them? Okay, you uh, you got a pencil? I know. Don't yeah. believe me, sir. I know the drill. Yep. And what's your first name again? My name is Jamel. All right, Jamel. I know the drill. Okay, let's start <laughs> with 3805 Hewitt Street. Okay. okay. 3805 Hewitt Street is two bedrooms, about 840 some odd square feet. Mm-hmm. It's got the roof has been on it for probably about I don't know four years. Mm-hmm. It's got aluminum siding. This chair is covered with aluminum siding, and all the boxing and everything is covered with aluminum and vinyl. So it's no upkeep. No upkeep. Uh, it's got I own the refrigerator and the range with it. Okay. It's got electric baseboard heat. It doesn't have central air. Uh, the uh, renter furnaces the window unit. Mm-hmm. Got electric water heater. It's got a little tool shed out back. Not much of nothing. Just a kind of a maybe a twelve by eight little tool shed. Uh, it's on a pretty pretty good size lot. Uh. Let me think. It rents for, I go through Section 8. You do any Section 8 properties? Uh, occasionally. It rents right now, sir, for seven eighty five, and I'm tickled to death, and it all is automatic deposit. Mm-hmm. The renter pays zero. It rents for seven eighty five, which is always good when the renter pays zero. Yep. Uh, it's got, the. I just put brand new floors in it. It's got uh, vinyl, luxury vinyl plank, and carpet that was put in it. The girl's been there now about 14 months. So 14 months ago, I went completely through the inside, painted everything, put down uh, put down brand new floor in bedroom, living room, kitchen, bedroom, and bath. And uh, it's got uh, the water heaters on the back porch. The back porch is closed in. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's a good good little house. I have no problem no problem whatsoever renting. I've owned it. I've owned it probably forty eight years. So you've owned that one for forty eight years. Uh, well, do you do the math on it, sir? I bought it in <laughs> seventy six. Yeah, what nineteen seventy one? I know I've owned it over forty five years. Yeah, so I was born in eighty one. So if I'm forty two. We add a couple. We, we we add five more years to that. About forty seven, right on the money. Yeah, I've had it for a while. I've had it for, and, uh, and like I said, sir, it's not for sale. But uh, mm-hmm. you know, I'll entertain any offers. Okay. The only derogatory thing about the house, sir, those houses over there are old mill houses, and to get to the bathroom, you have to go through one bedroom. Okay. What I mean, if you say, "Hey, I got to go to the restroom," regardless of where you're at, you've got to go. the The bathroom is off of a bedroom. Yeah. So, and that's, I don't, I've never had any problem with that, but that's yeah. All houses are there are built like that unless someone changed the floor plan. Mm-hmm. I know exactly what floor plan that is. In fact, um, we we had several houses like that, so it uh, I understand how it works. So I know you weren't expecting to sell uh but here we are on the phone today right so um if you were to sell i know you know what they're worth what would you be asking for them you'd have to jamal you'd have to let me do some thinking on it uh most most people just google it up and uh, call me back and make me an offer and Mm -hmm. uh, i turned when i was working on it when i was remodeling it a guy came by and he brought his contractors with him and he offered me 45 and I turned it down. Yeah. You know, rents for 785. And I'll be honest with you, quite frankly, in that neighborhood, it would go, uh, you know, rents went up, as you well know, in the mm-hmm. last couple of years. That house could very possibly go for 850. Okay. It's 7, 8, 785 now. Uh, so I, I don't know what I could do. Or you can either just make me an, make me an offer. I mean, Understood. 
So here, here here's what I'm thinking. I, I want to make sure that we create a situation where it's uh, conducive for both of us, right? Where we can both be happy in it, and um, mm-hmm. and and you know, both of us can can make some money on it, right? Obviously, I'm an investment. Right. I'm in the investment business, and you know, uh, I, I look to create transactions where it's going to be beneficial for me, and at the same time, beneficial for you as well. Because if one party is not interested in the transaction, then, then nobody wins, right? So um, if you had to throw me in a ballpark, let's say you were to sell it today. Let's say I had a bag of cash for you right now. Uh, what needs to be in that bag in order for us to be able to close today? Well, sir, I'm just off the top of my head. If it rents for seven eighty five, and, and it's in good shape, mm-hmm. it, don't need, it don't need anything that I know of. Being, well... I'm going to paint the outside of the house. It's aluminum, but I've painted it before. I just mm-hmm. painted it with a brush. Uh, it's going to my, you can't, I'd have to do some thinking. Uh, okay. I, since it's not for sale, sir, and I'm not what y'all call a motivated seller, mm-hmm. I'd have to have somewhere around 80 for it. 80? And I know if you plan on reselling, it might not be possible for you, but, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying, uh, since okay. it ain't for sale, I, you know. Uh, so I'm the ballpark of 80, something like that. And that's reasonable. You know, I'm just, you know, I, I wanted to be thrown in the ballpark. Uh, to be honest with oh, yeah. you, I don't always work with, quote unquote, motivated sellers. Um, that's not always my market. My market is really finding people who are interested in creating a transaction that's beneficial for both. Right. So that that's really what, what I focus on um, because I can minimize you know, the competition and really maximize the happiness <laughs> between us and yeah. whoever we're working with. So I appreciate that. I understand what, what condition uh, the property is in. Uh, I understand the price point. Um, do you feel like it'll it'll appraise for that price point as of today? Was it a price for that? Mm-hmm. Pro- uh, I don't know. Okay. I haven't sold or bought one in so long, sir. I, That's fair. You know more about that than I do. Uh, That's fair. I don't know. All I know is, all I know is, in the shape it's in, back a couple of years ago when everything was sky high, uh, I'd, I'd probably got eighty for it then. Now I don't know, but uh, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just telling you, I understand. Just around eighty thousand. You plan on flipping it? There's probably no. No profit there, in it. But, I understand. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't think so. But it was crazy. It, it was crazy. I had uh, a realtor come to me one right down the street that was a little bit bigger than mine right down the street. Bought, mm-hmm. bought something like $140,000. I couldn't believe it. Wow. And I actually researched and she was telling me, oh, it was crazy there for a while. But yeah. Anyway, yeah, for sure. That, that's that one, sir. If you want to, okay. use interested in the other one too, right? Yeah. Um, well, let, let's talk about uh, this one first. Okay. Let, let me ask you... Um, on, on this one, um, I understand you. It sounds like you you like the the passive part of it. it. It's renting, doesn't give you a headache or anything like that. What what don't you like about it? About this process? I mean, you own the thing for forty seven years, so I'm, I'm sure there's not a lot that you don't like about it. But it, I'm, you know, is there anything that you don't there's like no, about it? No, there's nothing that I don't like about okay. it. It's just like a, you know, I tell you like. So, if, I've had people I get calls every day, and their last question always is, uh, "Sir, why do you want to sell it?" And I say, "The reason I want to sell it is because you called me." <laughs> you know, they I like that. To sell it. And, you know, I don't be, mean to be a smart ass, but that's no, that's I the get answer. It. Why do you want to sell it? Because you called me. Mm-hmm. Understood, man. So, quick question, sir: If I were to make you an offer on this property, and and, and I know you're not looking to sell it. But if I were to make you an offer, mm. would you consider taking profit in the form of monthly payments for a period of time? Nah, I've, uh, I've had that offer before, sir. I, I'm 72 years old. Understood. I'd rather not do that. But from what I understand, if, if which I, I have done that before, mm-hmm. and I've been on the other end of it too, mm-hmm. and if I was to do something like that, the price needs to be a little bit higher than just a slap, uh, just a flat cash price. You know what I mean? Yeah. So where would it need to be? Cash talk. So like, if somebody's gonna give you seventy-five thousand dollars cash for it versus 
want the fine assets, the seventy five is not the fine price. And I'm sure mm-hmm. you will yeah, that. of course. You gotta make some money on it. So where would that price need to be? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, buddy. I'd have to talk to my wife about it. You know, okay. she, uh, uh, let you, I, I'm digesting everything you're saying, and I, before we leave, I'm going to get your name and number and all that stuff. But, mm-hmm. uh, in fact, I just had this conversation with a guy just yesterday, mm-hmm. uh, like we're having now, on a different property, which I don't think you're interested in it. He just wants it because he owns one next door. But mm-hmm. uh, I just, you know, do I want to sell Let's let Jamal, let me put it this way. Do I want to sell it? Only if I can get top dollar. I guess that's the best way to word it. How can I get you top dollar? That's the that's the question. What's top dollar for you on the uh, yeah. on the financing end? Uh, let me talk to my wife about that. I mean, she's I mean, it's half hers. Smart I, man. You know, I just threw eighty out there, which I mean, because I don't want to do something to her. So, and she's a mathematician. Mm-hmm. Well, you shouldn't have done this because this, this, and this, <laughs> and this. But uh, I'll. Uh, well, that depends, Jamal, on how much you're paying up front, okay. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you know, all that. Okay, that that's fair enough, and I'm sure, I'm not trying to uh, close a deal on the first conversation. I know, I understand it's a relationship building process, and, and you understand that as well, right? Um, but yeah. what we're doing is we're, we're establishing a relationship, so if we can make something happen, I, you know, it sound, you sound like the type of guy that I would love to to, to, to do some business with at some point. Um, whether it's today, whether it's next month or whenever, you know, but, uh, uh, at, at least, you know, we, we established that. So if you can look into that, you know, that, and you're truly interested in something like that, I would be interested in, I, I won't mind if we can create a scenario that works, I won't mind moving forward on something like that as well. And I don't mind putting money down. So that's not a, that's not an issue. So we can talk you about that. I don't mind putting money down, you know, as long as the numbers make sense, I won't mind putting money down either. So if we can make something like that work, you know, we can, we can definitely have another conversation about that. Uh, How about the second property? Okay. Second property is 1020-1020 Watkins, W-A-T-K-I-N-S Street. Yes, sir. It is right, ar- right around the corner from the one we just discussed, probably 300 yards. Mm-hmm. Floor plan is exactly the same. It is on a huge lot. I don't know how big the lot is on the first one talked about, but all the relatives are telling me the lot is big. They call it huge. Mm-hmm. They said it's a quarter of an acre, which I'm sure the plat would show it. It is two bedrooms. It's got vinyl siding on it. Okay. Everything is covered. No maintenance. No maintenance, done except for I'll tell you in just a minute. Uh, it's got vinyl siding on it. It's got a treated front porch made out of treated lumber. It's got concrete steps going to the porch, concrete sidewalk, second set of steps going to the street. If you Google it, it's a real cute little house. The roof is old, sir, but it does not leak. It's old, but it don't leak. Uh, the back door could be stand to be replaced, not necessarily. It could probably be spruced up. Uh, the bathroom floor has some rot in it, but I've got a gentleman that's been there forever. He's an elderly guy, and he said, oh, don't worry about it. Just lay a piece of plywood over it. He's an elderly guy, and he, he's a fantastic runner. I mean, he's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, And it's got wooden windows in it, which they could be painted. Mm-hmm. But, you know, most people like to put the vinyl windows in. It's got wooden. The trogory thing, sir, is old roof that don't leak, wooden windows, little rot in the bathroom floor, probably 30-inch uh, square, mm-hmm. and the back door can stand to be changed. Low maintenance, no maintenance outside other than windows, zero. I mean, pressure washers are just like the other one. All you need is a pressure washer. Okay. Uh, it rents. It rents for six. 60 which i could get a whole lot more he's been there so long i haven't did anything to that house in years and years and years he lives there he pays the rent great he don't ask me for nothing only in emergencies he's lived in another house of mine i think the world of him and he's still on the lease and from what i understand you got to let him stay the lease out and on that one right there sir i've turned down 70. Okay. And it, it needs some work. You, you, you'd, have, you'd probably have to put five grand in that one to get it completely up. But 
It's like the other. It, it probably rent for eight fifty. It's just in a good neighborhood. Okay. Sounds. It's, good. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to tell you. It's got now. It's got a natural gas furnace under the house, but it has no air conditioning either. It just has. He has a window unit. Okay. Sounds good. So window units in in both houses. This one needs some repair. The other one is in better shape. So if you were to sell this one today, what would you be asking for it? Realistically. Well, I've, I've turned down 70. I had late, one lady offered me 68 to pay all closing. And I told her I'd get back with him before I got back with another guy. Offered me 70 and pay all closing. And I just, I didn't get back with him at all. I just got a bit tied up and busy. I'm, I've been doing this sort of for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. That's all I do. Mm-hmm. And, uh, same way here, Jamal. It's not for sale. But, uh, you know, if, if the money's right, we're tight, you know, I... Right. Yeah, understood. If, if somebody offered me cash for that one, it would probably take, like, like 75. Okay. Again, because I'm not a motivated baby seller. And mm-hmm. there's some Hispanic people that are taking over the neighborhood, and I guarantee you, once, once my renter's done with it, he just signed the new lease a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. Once he's done with it, if I stick a sign in the yard, I bet it won't last two days because those Hispanic people, they fix things up nice and they, they're, they mm-hmm. very clandestine. For sure. And if, when my, when my renter gets done with it, then I really will test the waters on it. And I'm betting I could get top dollar then. I'm just saying, mm-hmm. maybe wrong. Understood. And I, and that's kind of where I'm going with it. You know, I, I want to see what top, where, where, where that price needs to be in order for us to make it happen. I understand uh, you, you mentioned something about seventy five cash, but what if we were to, if I were to give you a, a, a handsome down payment on that one as well, and we test the waters with seller financing for a short period of time, would that be something that you want to discuss with your wife as well? Yeah, what do you call a short period, sir? I don't know. Let, let's see what what works for you and your wife. We can okay. we can okay. you know I'm I'm flexible. Okay. okay. You know so, so. If I'm wrong. The ball's in my court now. I call back and say, Jamal, here's the best package I can do. And we go from there. Right? Yep. That, that's it. So let's, let's do some homework then. So, so, so you'll talk to your wife, see what the best, uh, what the best packages we can do. And I'll drive by the properties today and then we'll connect. Um, okay. when was the best day to connect? Give me a call back probably about it's no longer than say Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. Now, when you go by the Watkins Street, now that fella, he's a, he used to, when he was working, he was a yard sale man, so you're going to see a bunch of junk and stuff in the yard. No problem. But I'll tell you what, you could not ask for a better renter. He is perfect. Perfect, perfect. And when I say perfect, sir, I've been in the business 40, probably 48 years, and when I say perfect, that's, that's counting a lot of renters. Sounds good. I can definitely appreciate that. I've been doing it for 22 years myself, so you got a lot. You, you've been in there for about double, double the time. Uh, so I can definitely appreciate yeah. you, and and I appreciate the fact that you understand um, what the business is about. It's easier having conversations when I'm speaking to someone like you. I got to run. Hey, no problem. So talk- I'll call you Tuesday, and, and we'll talk then. Uh, that sounds good. All Thank right. You, Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, so we've established a relationship with this particular seller. Uh, he is interested, even though he says he's not. So I'm reading in between the lines. Now, I was more straight up with this guy. I didn't have to use certain words or persuade him in any way because he understands the business. This guy has been doing it for over 40 years, twice as long as I have. So when I'm dealing with investors who understand the business, I'm more direct with these investors. So I'm asking for seller financing rather than saying taking your payments over time. Even though I did position it that way when I did speak with him, he understood exactly what I was talking about because he's done it in the past. But let's see what he comes up with. The ball is in his court. Notice I gave him homework. He kept trying to get an asking price out of me. And guess what I did? I kept rephrasing the question in order to be able to get the price out of him. Notice I rephrased the question multiple times. On the first house, he finally came up with 80. The second house, he came up with 75. So between both of these houses, he's at $155,000, I believe it is, if my math is correct. And if that's the case, I'll be honest, I'll probably put 10 
to twenty thousand dollars down in order for him to finance these properties. But I'm not gonna let him know that up front because his number may be lower than mine. He might say, Hey, give me ten thousand dollars down and we can finance these over a period of time. But what I did do is I try to tap into his reason why and really try to understand that he likes cash flow. That's why he still owns these properties. So if he can still collect on cash flow by financing the properties for me over a period of time, which I didn't want to give him a time frame as well, I let him do most of the talking. And all I did was ask questions, right? And that's how you want to phrase these conversations. But if I can continue to pro provide him with cash flow over a period of time and he finances the deals for me, and I don't have to come out of my pocket with a lot of money to own two properties in a market where people wish they can purchase a house for $100,000, then I'm winning all day long on this. So I am going to regroup with him on Tuesday. I marked it down on my paper as Wednesday, but I'm going to call him on Tuesday because he insisted he kept repeating Tuesday to me. So I'm going to call him Tuesday afternoon. I am going to record the conversation. Obviously, it may be in a different video, but I'm going to create a series out of this and we'll see where we can go from here. Maybe we can create a deal. Hopefully we can and I can show it to you on camera. Maybe I can get a walkthrough on the properties. If that's the case, I will be sure to show you the entire process. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, click the notification bell. Look, if you're interested in me doing a lot more things like this, really showing you the ins and outs of how I do business, be sure to leave a comment in the comment section. Share this video with all your family and friends looking to get started in real estate, and I'll see you guys on the next one.